So welcome everybody to the third part where I look at my uh, Blu-ray collection, uh, which also includes 4Ks, but we have yet to get up to those yet. But yeah, today we are looking at Eureka films, which have released films either just under the Eureka moniker or under the Masters of Cinema series as well. So it's a mix of those two, but they are all under the same label after all. So uh, yeah, we're going to look at the uh, single uh, disc uh, efforts, or at least the standard efforts, and then uh, the more special edition versions. So uh that are also single efforts, and then we'll look at the collections that they've released as well. Collections that aren't on the same kind of scale in terms of, you know, pr uh, production effort, in terms of how they've been released, like, you know, the Indicator series films that we looked at, but they are still pretty good. So, yeah, firstly, uh, yeah, the uh, single uh, disc standard versions, which are in order of year, and, uh, yeah, firstly, Lifeboat, one of the first, well, one of uh, Hitchcock's first earliest of films from 1944, and uh, yeah, the entirety of the film takes place on a single lifeboat. And uh, yeah, you deal with a wide range of kind of uh, people on that lifeboat. It's got a pretty good cast as well, Tallulah Bankhead heading uh, all that cast. And uh, yeah, really, really riveting film. And yeah, despite only being on a lifeboat, it manages to uh, eke it out into a 98-minute film, which is fairly impressive quite frankly given the single location i do love love films that i successfully make a film in a single location and don't get boring so uh, yeah really good on that front and then a film by billy wilder one of the f uh, few films that i've actually got from him called double indemnity and uh, yeah a nice film noir again from 1944 and it's got a superb performance from Barbara Stanwyck, who was, i think i've got other films from as well but yeah she excels in this film noir and uh yeah, so does the director Billy Wilder. So uh, yeah, special Blu-ray edition, but still only a, a single disc, I think it is. Or at least it's got yeah, just a single Blu-ray, and then you get a little uh, pamphlet going through certain aspects of the film. But yeah, cracking film noir. Really, I'm into my film noir in the last couple of years, and uh, yeah, that's another one of those great ones from that period. And another one is Laura, which is also from 1944. Uh, stars Gene Turney, Dana Andrews, and has a early performance from Vincent Price, who uh, yeah is really really rather good in this, even though he's not the villain for once in a uh, film. And uh, yeah, short film, it's only 88 minutes long, but again, it's a really really great film noir. And uh, Otto Preminger is one of my favourite directors in that kind of genre. I have a collection of his from BFI that we'll look at at some point, uh, where we have three films from him in that as well, and they are all really good as well. So uh, yeah. But I think Laura is probably one of my favourites. Then we move on to the 1950s as we have the 1957 film Witness for the Prosecution. Which, yeah, is also uh, directed by Billy Wilder. Has uh, Marlene Dietrich and Charles Lautman in it. And uh, yeah, they are really, really good. Can't remember much from Tyrone Power, but it has been a while since I've actually watched this. But yeah, it's a yeah, really, really great um, adaptation of a uh, Agatha Christie novel. Who were, uh, yeah, do, wrote many, many great books, and the, many of the books have been made into films, you know, Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile and stuff like that. But yeah, this is uh, one of my favourite uh, film adaptions of her uh, work, and uh, even she herself said this was a uh, great adaption of her work. I think it's one of the few films she actually got to watch before she uh, passed away. So, uh, uh, one of the few films of her work, should I say, that she watched before she passed away, and uh, yeah, she gave it a uh, rounding, uh, resounding, uh, positive review of it. To be honest, and it, yeah, not a film noir, more of a court drama, but a, a great film nonetheless. Then we've got one of Sean Connery's underrated films, directed by Sidney Lumet, *The Offence*. Now we have *Diamonds Are Forever* to thank for this film, because even though that film is absolutely appalling, it's easily one of the worst Bond films ever made. Sean Connery only made it in under two circumstances. One, he got a big salary that he gave to charity, and uh, the second was that he got to make two films of his own desires. Didn't get to make two of them; only got to make this. But what a way uh, to uh, you know make up for that film by making one of the uh, best uh, you know drama f dramas out there. And uh, yeah, basically, uh, Sean Connery is a cop who uh, lets a paedophile get to his head a bit too much, and. Uh, yeah, it's a yeah, great, great film. It's really dark, not exactly for the light of art. It is a 15 and contains strong violence and a sex crime film uh, theme. But, yeah, it's a yeah, cracking film. And, uh, yeah, he's one of the best Sean Connery, uh, you know, 
performances that he's ever done, quite frankly. And uh, yeah, Cindy LeMay does a really, really good job for, of it. And it's all set in the UK as well, which I think Cindy LeMay is an American. So uh, yeah, that was a, a big change for him because he's not used to the uh, kind of places and uh, environments that we have over here. And then finally, uh, yeah, a bit older, uh, the, the offence came in 1972, so a bit newer than that is uh, this film, which is a cracking uh, B-movie horror film, Night of the Creeps, from uh, 1986. And, uh, yeah, it's a really, really uh, fun, you know, low bu lowish budget uh, zombie comedy horror film. And, uh, yeah, it's got a great performance from t uh, Tom Atkins, who was in several other uh, superb horror films from the 80s, Halloween 3, Maniac Cop, being the two that immediately come to mind. Uh, but yeah, this is also great in this as well. And uh, yeah, if you scream, you're dead. So uh, yeah, cracking film. And uh, yeah, it's only 90 minutes as well, so it's in and out before you know it. And uh, yeah, really, really fun. A, uh, another 80s horror film, which is in a uh, VHS kind of packaging, which has been done by HMV as well, as we will see when I eventually get round to them, is Fright Night. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's in a VHS kind of box. So you've got the... Uh, kind of stuff on the side which I really really like obviously I don't actually have any VHS films because I don't actually have a VHS player either but yeah it comes packaged like this as you can see it's got the design on the front and then you open up the box carefully and you get a couple of art cards so there's the uh, great uh, Roddy McDowell who was also in the Planet of the Apes series in the 60s and 70s then you get another art card, a really nasty looking vampire. And then you also get a poster of the uh, artwork that was on the front of the uh, box that you saw there. So I can't show it all off because the camera doesn't really go far enough. But yeah, it's a great poster. It's one I had up, in, up until recently, but a lot of my posters have been getting damaged due to heat and light and general wear and tear out being out in my room for a long time. I had that Fright Night poster up for at least a couple of years and uh, yeah, they've gotten a bit worn and torn. So... Uh, have have had to take them down, and yet and the Blu-ray and DVD are laid out like two spools on a VHS cassette tape. So yeah, really nicely done, and uh, yeah, I really like the uh, way that they did these because it's all cardboard, so it's all recyclable if you need to actually uh, get rid of it at any point. And uh, yeah, that, that means it's not damaging for the environment either. And another one of the those kind of VHS ones I have, which is purposely made to look deteriorated, so don't go thinking I've left it, you know, in the middle of nowhere, is a Silent Running, superb early seventies sci-fi film with the great Bruce Dern, who I only have in one other film I think in my collection in The Burbs, which is another great eighties film. But this is from the nineteen seventies. It's nineteen seventy two. And uh, yeah, it's a complete antithesis to other sci-fi films from the 70s, if you think like Star Wars. It's a lot more serious, a lot more thematically weighty, uh, but still no worse for it. And uh, yeah, it comes in the same kind of packaging as the uh, Friday Night one. So again, got the VHS. And yeah, it's really nicely packaged. Again, this I had up on the wall for a while, so it's not... The most perfect condition poster ever, but it's a nice one as well with the uh, artwork there and everything on the bottom. And then we also have a couple of artwork cards. As you can see, it's got that typical 70s aesthetic in terms of what the expected the future to look like. Unfortunately, this only has the one disc in here. I think they didn't have. I don't think it's ever been released on DVD, so I think that's why. But, yeah, still, it's nicely packaged, nonetheless. And, uh, yeah, at least, uh, you know, is a film that is worthwhile watching and owning, if you're into those kind of films. And then the second to last um, special box set that is, you know, a single disc is Fistful of Dynamite, or Duck You Sucker, or several other names that was given to it. As I'll show you, because it is an Italian film and therefore many names were given to it. So, yeah, Duck Your Head or A Fistful of Dynamite, aka Duck You Sucker, aka Once Upon a Time The Revolution. And it's given, got, given, given all those names because it is directed by Sergio Leone, who uh, did uh, Once Upon a Time in the West, as well as the Three Dollars trilogy, 
or the Man with No Name trilogy. So uh, yeah. It was his last ever Spaghetti Western from Sergio Leone, uh, which is a shame because, you know, five in a row is more than most people even make in their entire lifetime, let alone in the space of only a few years. But yeah, it's a really, really great film. I was so, so surprised when he announced that it was getting a release on Blu-ray because up until that point, I've only ever been able to see it on either DVD or a really poor version on TV. And uh, yeah, you get two versions of the film. You get the US cut and the uh, Italian version. I think, in all honesty, they're pretty much the same outside of language and dubbing. So, yeah, I prefer the Italian version because it's dubbed a little bit better because most of it is in Italian after all. But yeah, Rod Steiger and James Coburn are great. The action is superb. It's thematically deep. And uh, yeah, it's a great way to end Sergio Leone's run of spaghetti westerns it only direct one more film after that and it's once upon a time in america which is again another superb film and one that really does need a uh, release on blu-ray quite frankly and finally we've got a uh, kaiju film mothra talk about a very varied amount of films already we've had sci-fi we've had horror spaghetti western film noir drama you know thriller and now we've also got kaiju as well from mothra this is the only kaiju film I think um, uh, Yuriko have actually released, which is a bit of a shame because there are so many other kaiju films from the 50s and 60s that have yet to have a, a Blu-ray release, like Rodan or Atragon or anything like that, really. Uh, thankfully, Harrow Video are releasing the Jai Dimension series on uh, Blu-ray in July, which I'm really, really looking forward to. But yeah, this is a superb uh, little collection, this is. I love the colours of blue, uh, pink and yellow. And it really does stand out amongst my collection, quite frankly, because there's not many other films I own that are in these kind of colours. And uh, yeah, it is absolutely superb. Nice solid box. Then you've got the uh, disc itself, which is only on Blu-ray. There is no DVD of this that I know of. But that doesn't really matter, to be honest, because I don't really watch any films on DVD anymore. Nice solid 90 minutes long, and it's directed by the great Ishiro Honda, who also did um, Godzilla and several other films in that series. Also did plenty of other kaiju films outside of that which yeah just shows how great he was at the time and uh, yeah you also get a gorgeous poster which i'll try and unfold for you in the best way possible it's got the uh, original japanese version on one side and then the uh, new artwork on the other or at least what i think is the new artwork but yeah ravished try and show you as much of it as possible mightiest monster in all creation ravaging a universe for love and yeah there we go got all the credits on the bottom so yeah really really nice film uh one of the better kaiju films of that period and then you've got the original japanese version on the other side so you've got all the japanese credits mothra there and then you've got the japanese cast and then mothra herself which i had to turn around just so you could see it but yeah Great poster, great double-sided poster, really nice thick paper as well. It's not like the useless uh, kind that you see on plenty of other Blu-ray releases, some of which I've actually had myself. And then you finally get a uh, really nice booklet, which again goes through a load of different stuff. Again, really nicely coloured, and then you get some images of the uh, actual film itself. It's not actually in black and white, but the pictures are whatever reason and there she is sinking a ship so uh, yeah superb film it's easily one of my favorite kaiju films and it's a shame we don't have more of them to be honest now we're going to move on to the collections and uh, yeah we've got another pair of Ishiro honda films the h-man and battle in outer space the h-man is a good film but battle in outer space is my favorite of the two and uh, yeah both of them like a lot of films from that time were filmed in toho scope and uh, yeah superb pair of films and again, Ishiro Honda showing off that he can make pretty much anything work, quite frankly. So yeah, battling out of space, and you can swap the uh, cover to uh, have the H-Man instead. Because as you can see, you can kind of see the artwork there underneath the disc that the H-Man is there. But I prefer battling out of space, so that's why I swapped them over. And yeah, you get a nice little booklet inside as well. But yeah, two really, really good films. Uh, this was a blind buy. Uh, not something I often do, but I really could not take up the miss out on the chance of getting more Ishiro Honda films, especially since when I did get it last year, I was really in the swing of watching so many films from Japan at that time. 
many kaiju films, so I really wasn't going to pass up that opportunity. Then we've got the Inner Sanctum series, or Mysteries, uh, the complete film series starring Lon Janey Jr., who's in all of all six of them. They're not the most consistent of films, uh, with one of them being not awful, but definitely the weakest of the six. And uh, yeah, you've got Calling Doctor Death, Weird Woman, Dead Man's Eyes, Frozen Ghost, uh, Strange Confession, and Pillar of Death. Weird Woman, I think, is the one I like the least out of the six. But yeah, Strange Confession and Calling Doctor Death were really rather good, and uh, Frozen Ghost, Dead Man's Eyes, and uh, Pillar of Death were decent. Just Weird Woman, just I think. I didn't like it as much. I think it's probably because it came off the back of one of the strongest out of the six, Calling Doctor Death. So I was expecting something to be as good as that. But yeah, six films. All made between 1943 and 1945, totaling 382 minutes in length overall. There's a great late Lon Janey Jr. And they're on two discs total, three on each. So, uh, yeah. Nice collection, to be honest. Again, that was a blind buy, like the uh, issue of Honda films. But, yeah, well worth getting. Then we've got Karloff at Columbia. Again, this was a blind buy. But because I like Boris Karloff so much that I thought, you know, it's worth a chance. And uh, yeah, I've only seen one of the six so far. The Black Room, which was actually really rather good. Didn't have great expectations for it, or really any expectations for it. But it is a really, really good, you know, kind of like gothic horror, gothic drama kind of film. And uh, yeah, really surprised me. The rest of the films, well, The Man They Could Not Hang, The Man With Nine Lives, Before I Hang, and The Devil Commands were part of the uh, Mad Doctor uh, Collective kind of like an informal series or similarly themed around a mad doctor and Boris Karloff plays that role in all four of those films and then the boogeyman will get you as a parody of those films so uh, yeah I do look forward to seeing what they're like but obviously the black room is the one film out of those six that isn't part of that series or that loose series so I'm not sure it's going to give me the best expectations but there's Boris Karloff himself in the Black Room. That's where that still is from. And then this is from one of the Mad Doctor films. Not sure which one. But there there we go. And yeah. They're on across two discs. So the Black Room was from 1935. The Man They Could Not Hang was from 1939. The Man With Nine Lives was from 1940. And then... Spin it around. Uh, Before I Hang was also from 1940. The Devil Commands was from 1941. And the Boogeyman will get you from 1942. So, uh, yeah, this collection massively expanded my uh, 1930s and 1940s collection. I also get, it, again, a nice booklet with some script excerpts, some posters from the time. And, uh, yeah, some screenshots of the film as well. Really, really nice. I hope the uh, other five films are as good as the first. And finally, a free uh, set collection of Bela Gozi films uh, based on Edgar Allan Poe's uh, poems. And uh, yeah, two of these actually star Boris Karloff, The Black Cat and The Raven, but Murders in the Rue Morgue is only starring Bela Lugosi, that is famous in that respect. But yeah, this wasn't a blind buy, I actually f watched them beforehand physically. But yeah, unfortunately we only get the uh, Murders in the Rue Morgue as a choice for the cover. I would have liked the cover a choice at least one of the other ones, maybe The Black Cat. I think that was my favourite of the three. Uh, but yeah, there's Boris Karloff on the left and Bela Lugosi on the... Right, and uh, yeah, across two discs, pretty much because I think the other two are quite short, whereas uh, Murders in the Room Morgue is probably the longer of the three, I think. I can't tell, actually. Oh, where's the slip cover? Well, there's 189 minutes between the three, so yeah, I assume that one of them is significantly shorter than the other. But yeah, still a really, really good collection. And uh, yeah, really like it. So yeah, that's everything from Eureka. I have more on the way, but you'll see that in a video where I uh, in, in a uh, update to my collection series that I'm going to be doing. So uh, anything from a uh, you know a company that I've already covered, like uh, uh, Indicator or anything like that, will get in put in a video of that. I will make sure that there's plenty in those videos. I won't do it just because I've got one film or uh, or a pair. I'll do it when I've got a significant amount that I've built up. But either way, yeah, I highly recommend checking out Eureka's releases. There are, yeah, a wide ranging amount of films. Like I said, we've looked at, you know, horror, kaiju, um, you know, spaghetti western, sci-fi thrillers, 
and uh, yeah, even film noir, and uh, yeah, they really uh, are, do knock it out of the park. And they're not even massively expensive as well. The Inner Sanctum Mysteries, for instance, was only £25 for six films, which is, yeah, still really, really nice. And uh, the uh, Boris Karloff one was also only £25 for all those six films as well, so yeah, you're, you're really not doing bad. You, you're paying less than a fiver for per film, which is pretty good. And uh, yeah, cheap enough to make a gamble on, as far as I'm concerned. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.